Fire alarm goes off. There we go. All right. So for an impromptu management Q&A that was not on the calendar, so you can't hear me. Okay. Hold on. All right. The AV squad is working on it. Um, all right. So uh, for an impromptu management Q&A, we got quite the crowd today. Uh, all right. We're going to go through things. Um, hold on. Wilson Pond is calling me. Um, sorry, do you have your badge on? Yeah. Or Tom, actually. You see that? Emergency response in action. I'll explain to you what just happened. I'm the manager on duty today. Okay. This is my personal cell phone. A resident in the men's locker room just pulled the pull cord. And I got the emergency alert from their PERS button on my cell phone, and I was able to just deploy Tom. See, it works. So where are your PERS, bu PERS buttons or pull the, those pull cords? And it actually works. Personal cell phone got the PERS button. So, haha. -ha. Um, all right. So the first thing I'd like to do today is I want to introduce to you some dining folks that I know you don't know. Um, some of them you may know. I'll start with the one that you may know first, and hopefully you do. Chef Jared, our executive chef. Stand up, stand up. Come over here. Oh, look at that. That's our executive chef, Jared Cuts, Cuts, Coots. Let's get it right. Right, we have to own our name. Uh, uh, Executive Chef Jared has been with us for some time, and I'm glad that you all know and gave him the round of applause that he certainly deserves. He is the person that is going to uh, prove to you that um, despite the changes that we're going to deal with temporarily, our dining program is going to go off seamlessly. And to help support that, Neil Fox. Yes, more. He wants the same level of enthusiasm. Jared, yes. <laughs> um, and look, he brings the, the Amy flair. Um, so uh, Neil is with us on an interim basis to cover Amy's role. So he is the interim general manager. And he, uh, you know, he arrived immediately uh, from Texas, actually, uh, flew in on Monday. And uh, this is one of the things that I really appreciate. Appreciate. I know why, Betsy. I had the other mic was on. Um, this is one of the things I really appreciate about Sodexo. You know, sometimes you ask, why do we keep Sodexo? They do ask. Um, and I'll explain who the guy in the suit is in a second. Um, one of the things that they provide to us is seamless depth on the bench. And if we were self-operated and we had a situation that can come up, there are personnel issues that happen. And sometimes they happen in critical positions when you only have one person in that position. Um, what Sodexo can do is provide to us resources like this in a critical role that ensures that residents can continue to have service at a seamless level um, and to me, that's the kind of thing as the CEO that lets me sleep at night. So they're not perfect. No organization is. But for the last 15 years, this is something that Sodexo has um, always proven to me. And so I like to be able to demonstrate these kinds of things to you. So the guy in the suit is Todd Barker. Oh, this is a room full of love today. Um, Todd is the district manager for Sodexo, so he is not here on a daily basis, uh, but he is our uh, in our relationship, and um, he is the person to which the general manager or Amy slash Neil's role reports. Um, so he just happened to be here today. So I said, why don't you come in and say hi to everyone? Now I feel like this is really loud. Um, all right. Do any of you guys want to say anything on mic? Oh, look at this. 
We have a volunteer. So I, I hold on. It takes a second to turn on, uh, and you have to hold it close can to you. Hear me? Can you hear? I can speak loud too. I'm pretty. Loud. So uh, the one thing I did want to say is you, you have a great team here at Woodland Pond. Your chef does a great job. All the employees here do a great job. So there's, you're not going to see any changes in anything, and we're just here to support and make sure that they have the support through this change. And the person that we bring in will go through Michelle and everybody else. And, uh, you know, the next person that comes in will will be a great addition to Woodland Pond and just bring some great, uh, great things to it. So we're only here to support. Jared runs a great ship. So, like I said, Jared's not changing anything. His food's going to taste the same. So I, I just want you guys to know that everything will be status quo and everything will be good. And if you have any issues, please bring them up. Let us know. So that's all I can. Does anybody have questions for Todd as the district manager level? Jared, would you like to say anything on the mic? <laughs> oh, of course. Yes, you would like to say something. That's right. That's right. I'm so, that's, that's devastating. <laughs> Luckily, it was like, can you hear me? All right. Uh, I hate hearing my own voice. Um, obviously, Amy did these in the past. So if there's any questions regarding any dining concerns moving forward, obviously, you can email me. I'm in the dining room almost every evening. I've spoken to many of already regarding regarding changes that, you know, will not happen. Everything's going to run the same way it did before. We do fish specials every night. We're having one tonight. We're still doing cheeses. The soups are going to taste the same. The entrees are going to taste the same. Everything's going to be, is going to be, is going to be more than fine. Uh, I've told my staff, the show must go on, right? We're still going to put out the same quality of, of food that we did before as we will in the future. There's no changing. There's no changing of anything moving forward from here. The staff will change, but the food, will, you know, we're going to hire on a new, a new director for the position. But as far as we move forward from that, the quality of, your, of the service and the food will remain consistent as it has in the past. I think we do a pretty good job as of right now. So the idea is to do better tomorrow. If we're doing well today, then tomorrow we're going to do better than this. Uh, I hope everybody sees that in a day-to-day -day basis. I, I think I think you do. I talk to most residents at dinner time. So as of right now, I think we're in a, I think we're in a good spot. I have Neil to support me uh, through the coming weeks uh, while we while we make this transition. But as of right now, I think we're in a good spot. Okay, I'll take the mic around. Michelle's memo also mentioned that a chef manager left. Is yes, that is that going to be filled also? Yes, ma'am. We uh, still can't disclose that yet, Betsy. I feel a little funny bringing this up because it's so much better than it was. But I just want to put in a plug for being able to buy local produce. You've been fabulous, Jared, yeah. pushing some of that because we used to hear, oh, no, you need health certificates, blah, blah, blah. But living in the Hudson Valley in the summer, please keep giving us local stuff. I, w I will. So we did local strawberries last week. We we currently use a purveyor that can provide a, that can provide us with local ingredients. So the cheese is good. Uh, two new cheeses on this evening. Um, uh, tomatoes not yet. We got to. I, I have to wait for those for a moment. And then at the end of the summer, we're going to go right back into corn. Uh, but yeah, uh, local ingredients, as things become available, as I think they're going to have the quality that I expect and that I, I'm sure all of you expect, I will bring them in as as as, as I can. Other anyway. questions or comments? Here. Stephanie. I just wonder, do you have this soup position c covered for us who love soups? I made your soup today. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> So you'll have to tell me how good it is. I'm not sure. I think it's good. I, I'm i Susan. I have yes, a question about vegetables. Yes, ma'am. Well, I also have a question about meat. You know, the the, the food pyramid or whatever says a, a piece the size of a deck of cards. And we often get three or four times that, but we still only get two sides. And if one of those sides is a rice or a potato or starchy something, then we only get one green vegetable. And I'm wondering if that could become a routine thing that we get actually more vegetables and less protein. I, mean, I don't mean less protein, but smaller pieces of meat. 
you'd like a larger protein and a or a smaller protein and a larger well, size of vegetables? Well, it isn't it isn't so much that I want less protein okay. because I like pro a little protein in everything. But okay. yeah. Um I think we get more than we need of protein and less than we need, certainly at our age. The estimated serving size portion for every plate is roughly six ounces of protein, four ounces of starch, and four ounces of vegetables. We're not weighing these things as we carry out well, service, I was, obviously, I was but that's suggesting the, you should. What I'd really like actually is a third side and less, you know, a smaller portion of meat. That's all. What I would suggest, what I would suggest is this is something that can be discussed at dining committee. Um, these are committee type questions, so we'll bring that up. Okay, we'll go to Artie and then we'll move on to the next person on mic. Artie, you get the last question for Jared. Make, make it a good one. Not for Jared, but for the two gentlemen that are sitting there. <clears throat> well, before coming here, of course, I went and did my shopping and Sharon did some shopping for our food. I'd like to know what, how does the company go through briefly uh, from the producers of the food that, and we get good food here and I enjoy the meals, but how, how, do, how does this company, I, I, Sodexa, Sodexa? Sodexa. Yeah, how does that work from there, from the producer to our, our uh, staff in the kitchen? So you, Briefly. how do we procure product? Yeah, yeah. So we're a global company. Um, we have a pretty strict guideline on who we can bring you know, our, our products in from Cisco is our main, uh, our main line, our broad line provider. So we, we do audits on their warehouses. We do all that. So any, anybody we deal with, we have a, a very strict audit process, um, local produce, you know, we, we bring somebody in, they take a look at all the warehouses, all, you know, basically from, from ground to storage to here to make sure that it's safe and, and edible and things like that. So we have a whole procurement department that does that. So that's, that's pretty much how we, uh, yeah, we, we all across the country. Some are, uh, Pennsylvania is our biggest round of CCRCs that we deal with. Um, Garden Spot's a huge one, Frederick Village. Uh, offhand, I'm not sure. I would be able to. So we're 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 actually based out of France, strangely, but we're we have a huge presence in in CCRCs and senior living in, in North America. So. You know, so we're out of there, but yeah, we have we have some of the biggest CCRCs in the country that we deal with. So. Right. So Todd is actually part of what is called the senior division yeah. of Sodexo. So yeah. um, they have a whole division within Sodexo that's just for senior living. So, all right, uh, Neil, would you like to say something? Hello, everybody. Very nice to meet you guys. Uh, I see that we have fall coming outside. For, for Texas, this is considered fall. So uh, I'm, yeah, it's great to actually be in some cool weather where I can, I could lounge. Uh, very nice to meet you guys. So I'm actually from San Antonio. Uh, I like to joke that I pay rent in San Antonio because I'm there so infrequently, but uh, it's a gorgeous community here and I'm very happy to be here on the interim basis. And you'll see me throughout the different dining rooms. Uh, every day for lunch and for dinner. And if you have any questions or comments or concerns, please feel free to bring them up to me and we'll discuss it internally and we'll always get back to you. One thing that's great about Neil is he has experience uh, doing interim uh, leadership at showcase accounts, which we are now one of um, within Zodexo. So that's excellent for us. Um, we achieved showcase status just within the last month. Uh, so only 7% of Sodexo accounts achieves showcase status. And um, it's basically sort of, I think of it like an accreditation, but they basically have uh, how many factors, like tons of factors you get audited on, right? Yeah, yeah. So we have, we have an audit process that we go through on, on basically our- They're not going to be able to hear you. Yeah, you have to... So we have, a, we have an auditing process that kind of brings out the, the top tier talent of Sodexo accounts. Um, we audit through that to 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 kind of baseline it. Um, just kind of a guideline out of almost 400 accounts, we only have 10 showcase accounts in the United States. So this is being one of them. So we bring uh, possible clients, we bring uh, new GMs through those, those types of things. So this is the type of account that we show off to to everybody that could be you know could be coming across Sodexo's you know 
board at any time. So yeah, yeah and we just achieved that um, like a month ago. Yeah. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. It's out of all of their accounts, ten across the whole country. So yeah. I think that's important for you guys to keep that in mind. Yeah. All right, you guys can go if you want. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming, and let's have a round of applause. Thank you. All right, Sarah or Tom, you can go next because Dave's going to close out the show. You don't have anything? Tom? Hello. I'm all dressed up for you today. I just, I didn't really, I didn't think I was coming in today, but um, all right, a few things. Uh, some of you seen the work on the trail has started. Um, and that's zipping along fine. A um, couple things. Um, I know some people have raised questions about trees. Are we taking any trees down? There's a couple coming down that are in the plan to come down. And that plan was approved by the uh, Walker Valley Land Trust um, already. Then any other tree that is leaning or dead that's in their way is going to come down also. They text me a few pictures of them. I went out and looked at them. There's some trees that are literally leaning across the trail and have been dead for a while, so they'll be coming out. But that's the only tree cutting that's going to be happening. Um, I'd say they're going to have to be out there another two or three weeks uh, doing what they're doing. And so I appreciate, you know, you're uh, leaving them alone for a bit and not going down there while they're working. Um, other things that are happening, um, the root, we're replacing the roof on the health center, and that's going well. We're probably going to maybe a week away from that being complete. Um, that'll be good. Well, it doesn't really, you don't really see that much unless you go up on the roof. Um, air conditioning, as of right this minute, well, as of right this minute, they're all working. I'm not aware of any that aren't. There was a little issue in the art studio maybe 10 minutes ago, but I got faith in Johnny. I'm sure he fixed it. Um, so that's, there was, a, there was a couple bumps over the weekend in a couple of hallways, but that's, everything's back on and working. Um, also, starting July 1st, we're transitioning from one grounds company to another. We're moving from one grounds company to another. Yeah. Um, the, the ground company that we the grounds company that we had contracted with, he asked if he could uh, if we could release him from his contract. Uh, we agreed. We were able to uh, transition to another, uh, qualified, a, a much larger, more qualified vendor. Um, and they'll be starting with us, uh, July 1st. So like, uh, like any time, no matter who you start with, um, you know, there'll be a little, uh, tweaking at first. Um, but then things, you know, things should go along very well. Um, that's really all I have right now. And I know Michelle said something the other day, and it's very important that on this hot weather, please let us know about air conditioning as soon as you think there's a problem. Even if you, there might not be a problem, if you think there's a problem, let us know. Because for some reason, people like to wait until 4 or 10 on Fridays to tell us things. I think there's a problem with the fence at back of the cottages. Yes, there is. What are you going to do about it? Right this minute, I don't know. But I mean, we I do we do need to do something about it. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a copy of the plan for the trail restoration that we could look at? Um, yeah. Um yeah, I, I, yeah, we could I could even we could uh yeah, we'll put it in the library. Good idea. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And it's and you'll see it's a that's a I've seen a lot of plans over the years, and this, this set of plans is like a really detailed set of plans. It was really good. Yeah, Tom, the, the heat in the fifth floor and sixth floor south. In Fixed. The, as of. They're, they're, as, it should be done right now, but they're here this morning and they're here all day, and that's mm -hmm. going to be solved. Because yeah, an hour ago, it was still pretty hot up there. Yeah, yeah. Um, there. We have brand new units in all three wings, and there's nothing wrong with the units. There are some issues with the controls that control the units, not the units. So we're still adjusting all that. And it's 
a lot more complex than it should be, but it's, okay. it's working out. Well, thank you. I'll look forward to a cool quarter. You should have it. Tom, what are the <clears throat> the hours that the fountains are on and off? Off the top of my head, I don't recall. But if, if I would say to anybody that has questions about the fount the fountain hours, um, talk what or the height, talk to the plant operations committee. They whatever like if, if you guys want to change the hours, to like I adjust them. To whatever they say. That's not my problem. My bedroom has the the spigot right outside, right. and when it's done, it, I'm I hear it, and it it's been running all night. So, and then I wake up, and it's you know all day. So I just want to know is if it's supposed to be that way. Uh, let me look into it. Well, let me look into the whole issue with I. I know I know what you mean, and there was an issue a few years ago. Let me look. Let me look into it again. But that's something that would just you know, if you have any questions like that, just always put a work order in. But I know what you mean. I'll look into that. Right. Uh, Tom, on the uh, that particular issue, um, I showed it to Rob when we had the um, ice cream social. Right. It's misty. There's a hose that runs along in front of her. Oh, that's the one that. All right. I. I and be, it's still misting today. All right, no, but I know I heard a conversation about that about a half hour ago. So that's okay. what they were talking about. That's, all right, that's what it is. All right, I heard about it. Yeah, about a half hour ago, okay, I heard that. Problem fixed. Doesn't have to come to physical plant. No problem. Well, yeah, but just if anybody has any questions about timing of the fountain, I I don't I think don't know who is in charge of this, but in the hundred degree weather that we've been having, the uh water in the beast in the what is not available past two o'clock on Sunday because that's when the dining room goes home and also during the week it's around four o'clock and I was wondering if we could have water available later because of the heat that yeah that would be a dining, dining issue. issue I'll talk to them yeah. about it yeah Unless it's a complaint, then it's Rob's fault. The other thing I would always, well, the one thing you can always keep in mind, Bonnie, is there's always the water cooler in the fitness center. So that's available 24, 24 seven. So if at any time you want cool water, the one in the fitness center is available 24 seven. Just keep that in mind too. And Trina, I'm coming over to you. There's also a water fountain right between the restrooms across. Oh, and yeah. And then there's the water fountain too. Right. Uh, Trina, and then I'll go to Betsy. Being in a cottage uh, and being very close to the rail, um, the the, um, the weeds are probably up up to my hips by now, and there's also a very large bush uh, that blocks my kitchen. That started. I, I've requested for it to be cut down several years. It's now like a tree. Let me look into it. I don't want to make any commitments. Let me look into it, and I will. I'll, let me talk to Mark Eisenhandler, and I'll let you know. Well, okay, but it, it, for people who have pollen, I've been coughing for three months, two months. It the, to have all that brush. There's a, there is always, I would say, and I'm going to keep the plan ops committee busy. If you have a, when it comes to the trimming of the back slope, there are, if I have, if I have four residents, I have five opinions of when it should happen. And I'm going to take lead, I'm going to take guidance from plan ops committee. So, so no, the, the plan operations committee, I'm gonna, well, there's like a lot of committees. I'm going to go with the plan ops committee. Um, so because there's, there's how some people believe it should be cut more frequently. Other people should believe it should be only cut twice a week. I mean, twice a year. Currently we're going a twice a year. That's what's in the contract. Tom, wait a minute. That, that bush has not been cut for about five years. Like I say, I, Standing here right now, I can't speak to it. I don't know. I don't know anything. So I need to look into it. So your your individual bush, Trina, is a work order issue that Tom will look into. Right. In terms of the cutting of the western slope and the lawn and things like that, there are certain times of the year it needs to get done. And Mark Eisenhandler is already talking with our alternatives to grass 
committee about that. So I'll fill you in on that conversation. Right, right. There's a certain time of the year that it's supposed to be done. And everybody's allergies flare up at different times of the year. So, I mean, obviously you should talk to your physician about maybe getting something for that and so forth, but we'll, we'll do, we'll talk about it. Go ahead. About two weeks ago, 10 days ago, we had two extremely loud claps of thunder. When we went right after that to dinner, the fire doors were closed in our hall. What happened that made the fire doors close? Two claps of thunder. No, but what word, where do you know where it struck her? It, it it sent something like that, and it happens often. It sends a uh, a surge through the power, and and it'll trip a number of things in here. That particular one two weeks ago, it it took out a controller in the septic pump also. So it just trips something, and then the fire panel picks it up and thinks it's a fire. The woodland pond. Woodland pond. Some I don't know. Tom. Uh, driving out of the parking lot uh, in several places with my car, the bushes in the strip between the road and the parking lots right. are often too high. It's dangerous. Can't see out there if someone is coming particularly fast. I will take a look. Thank you. Okay, Sharon, you're going to be the last one. You guys are closing out every director. I don't know. Uh, Tom, I just wanted to ask you about the odor that is still in present in front of the pool around that area. It still smells terribly. Oh, the grease pit, the grease pit, the grease pit. It's a the grease trap. Um, and that, our grease trap that right, right outside Michelle's office is a, is a 10,000 gallon grease tank. And it doesn't have um, really any uh, baffle on it or any kind of uh, smell dissipating system. And uh, Dave will tell you just this morning in a discussion this morning, we talked about that, about that after the renovation, it will have that. Um, so I, I don't have a good answer for you other than it comes and goes, it's not there all the time. Yeah. So basically what happens is in the kitchen, um, there's, Obviously, there's a lot of grease that goes into the into the plumbing, you know, when they do dishes and everything like that. So there's a system in there that um, lets the grease rise up um, and it, when the plumbing comes out and there's a huge, basically, it's like a septic tank. It catches all the grease and then the water goes down and goes out through pipes into the sewer system. But the grease stays in the grease trap. So outside of my office, there's a 10,000 gallon drum that holds the grease. And there's two PVC pipes out there that you see when you walk. And once a month, you see those big trucks that pull up, they suck out all the grease. But on some days you smell the grease and other days you don't. I smell it every day in my office. So if you ever come into my office and you see the little yeah. white air, air filtration system, it's so that you don't think that I just ate beans in my office. Um, that's why that's always on is so that it doesn't smell like the sewer in my office. Thanks, Tom. Correct. Thank you. All right, before we go on to Dave, uh, who is gonna be the, who's gonna close out the show, I just wanna mention something. Um, you will have gotten a memo from me in your email today. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you will. You have a copy of it also in your mail cubbies, even if you are a green dot, because I promised you that even if you are a green dot, um, you will get a printed copy of important memos. Um, if you have not seen it, uh, it just describes that there was a incident of concern in memory care last night uh, between a couple of residents. Uh, no one was injured. Um, but we do like to be transparent and explains the incident. Some of you are going to ask um, because it does um, concern residents that found themselves behind locked doors, okay, in, res in the residences, in memory care. And I've already had several of you ask, my gosh, why would memory care residents be able to lock their doors from the inside? So I'm just going to get ahead of that and address it. That is a requirement under the regulations. The memory care and assisted living setting requires us to allow them to have autonomy to be able to go behind a locked door. That is a social setting, not a medical setting. But we have to be able to unlock the doors from the outside, which we can. 
in this case, an intentional decision was made because the folks that were responding, and you will see this in the memo, were trying to be very careful not to make a situation escalate to not intentionally unlock the door from the outside. Um, so the police were here, EMS were here, our trained staff were here, paying very close attention to the situation as it was going on. So we have the capability to unlock the door from the outside with keys um, for safety reasons, but they intentionally did not do it because they did not want a situation to escalate. So keep that in mind as you read the memo. And if the question crosses your mind, I just wanna let you know, we're required to allow the resident autonomy and to be able to lock their door for, for, for privacy, but with the caveat that we be able to have a key to unlock that door for safety um, at any time, okay? Um, for anybody that read the memo yet, if you have any questions, I will field a couple of questions now. Otherwise, does anybody have anything for me on any other topic? before we move on to Dave's updates. Okay, now, Dave's gonna do a couple of things. He's gonna give you, first, he's gonna give you updates on what has transpired since we last met. So you pay attention to that part. Then he's gonna show you 3D renderings from our architect that represent current concepts of where we are, which, are subject to change, okay? These are still very much conceptual. Um, so subject to change, correct, sir? Yeah. Okay. All right, take it away, sir. I don't know if you like to hold it or stand it. Yeah. 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 Hey, everyone. Um, I've been here three months uh, and the last month has been very busy. Uh, it's been really, really great. So um, recently, sorry, can you hear me or not? How's that? A bit better? Um, so we in the last, oh, it's gone so quickly, I think 10 days a week, we um, expedited the process to select the GC for pre-construction. And so that, uh, I think I explained last time, that means that the uh, general contractor is a partner within the design process. So that as we go through the design, we're tracking the, the schedule, impacts on schedule, and as well as impacts on cost. And we're involving the uh, general contractor in all the decisions to do with how the construction is going to happen. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very important part of the process instead of designing and then going to a contractor and finding out that it's over budget or it can't be achieved in a certain amount of time or that there are better ways of building it. So that's why this is uh, so important. And so what we did was, um, we uh, we got in proposals from three uh, uh, contractors, and then um, we went through an interview process. Uh, we spent the better part of a day interviewing two of those contractors, and then decided uh, to award pre-construction to Wilson Construction, who are based out of Connecticut and North New Jersey. Uh, they have a phenomenal amount of experience within this field. Uh, and we were just so impressed. They actually, on for their interview, they came in with seven members of their team so that we could meet them, uh, you know, both from the top management right down to the guys who are going to be on the site, uh, the site supervisors. And so it was, you know, really impressive to meet their team and see how qualified they were and also the level of detail that they were asking questions about. So we, we feel really strongly about them as being a really good partner in this process. Um, and then actually just yesterday, we had a working session with them. So last Thursday, I made the call to say that they had the, you know, they were the selected candidate. And then yesterday, we had a, a working session to go through the budget for the uh, first and second phases. And that was just once again, a really um, a very solid session. We had the architects, interior architects involved in that as well. 
um, uh, with Walson. Um, we also, at the end of last month, had a, a tremendous day. It was a design charrette. So that's where we had actually the architects, AG Architecture and MDP. So AG came in from Wisconsin, uh, MDP. The interior architects came in from Philly. Um, and then uh, uh, we had a representative, Heather George, was up from Texas to be part of that, that intense design session in the room all together to review where we are with the with the design uh, for the um, that was for the community center and just make sure that the decisions that we were making were the best decisions given all the constraints design constraints as well as the requirements that we have uh, and uh, that was a, like as I say a one day session uh, with everyone in the room and we really uh, made a lot of good solid decisions. Yesterday, we did the same, not in the same room, but we did a Zoom uh, call. Oh, well, uh, Zoom call. Uh, sorry, that was this morning. Gee, things are moving fast. <laughs> so, um, and that was to concentrate on the, uh, the health center, doing the same kind of review, looking at what decisions we've made so far, and then just reviewing those as a team, looking at the impact on civil engineering, on cost and schedule and um, reviewing that. So that, that's what's been going on. Uh, what I really want to show you is um, just bear with me for a minute while I, I get this together, uh, show you some, some of our early images here. Uh, and I think, is this going to work? No, that's something else. I'm going to use this. Okay, so what you see here is um, the view from, so this is the existing main entry. And to the right here, you see the first uh, sketches of what the pack will look like from the front of the building. And I'm, I'm really, I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with this because I think there was a lot of concern about the pack being a big volume, just being this dead two-story big box at the front of the building. And yet, um, you know, it, they've scaled it in a way with porches, um, which I think is a lot more amenable to, you know, the entry of the building and doesn't crowd out the, the entry. Um, you will notice that the pack is in the location that we uh, originally were looking at. We explored other uh, locations on the site, uh, but for because you know it's kind of interesting even though woodland ponds very large they're very limited possibilities in terms of where you can add on to this building especially the size of the pack so uh what we have determined is that this is the only real location for it but we are uh doing connecting it to the existing building in a way that we preserve the uh upper windows to the library and uh, the, the actual size of the library is not impacted. I'm sure you'll be very happy to hear that. So the size of the library is the same as it is now, and we're gonna maximize the amount of light that we can get in, in into that room. So this is the view from the outside, and we'll go to the next slide. I think you can actually page down. Okay, so this is from the car park and you get a better view, close up view of the pack. And once again, it's sort of modulated with a, with that porch space. So it's not one big block. It's actually got lots of windows in it. And um, I, I'm, you know, as I say, personally, I'm, I, I'm, I was really, really impressed when I saw these first views because I think that the way that the architects have 
dealt with the massing of this at the front entry is pretty impressive, very impressive. Uh, the one, uh, that's, that's down here. Uh, that's through there, I believe. Yes. Yep. Through there. So it's still there. Do you want to take questions or do you I don't want to mind. wait? That's fine. Okay. Well, we can, yeah. I, I thought I saw another hand. Yeah. Oh. Um, I don't know if we have an overhead. These are just renderings right now, but it basically comes out. I mean, it pretty much comes out in that whole grassy area in front of the pack right now. I'm in front of the library. Yes, towards the parking lot, because it's going to be big enough to hold 200 seated people. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious about the acoustics uh, and what happens with a very tall ceiling. And is this is this being carefully worked out? Because this is a big issue with this room. Oh, yeah, I totally agree. And I think what, you know, this room here, um, you know, is a very basic room, let's face it. And so the new pack will have acoustic um, controls and also, you know, in terms of, uh, well, not just passively in terms of acoustic paneling and so on, but also the um, the PA setup in the in the new room will be much improved, uh, and also the lighting will be much improved because the the lighting, because you know the pack as we we all know it get used it's used for a whole multitude of uses. And so what we want to do is to be able to accommodate all those different uses and lighting is a great example of that. Uh, what we want is lighting control so that if it's a performance with someone up on the stage, then we'll have one, you know, or, or several different lighting situations for that, which you can set by just pushing a button. So how, how big? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it's. Uh, I think it might be 24 inches up. There is a ramp up to the stage. Um, yeah, but the floor I mean, itself of it, will be flat. Yeah, I don't want to get into like committing us to a lot of any of the interior design details because none of that really has been worked out. Right now, what we're really working on is the exterior footprint of the project and what. Dave refers to as the massing, which is sort of the exterior and visual impact from visual the impact and concepts. We have a lot, a lot of work to do on the interior design of the spaces. And that's where the focus groups are going to really start to come together. Um, why don't we move on to the next slide? Yeah. Dave? Oh, tomorrow, yeah, yeah. Uh, Lionel, I'll come to you in a second. Just hold that thought. This is another view. So, so this is looking from the main entry the portico back to the library and you can see there's you know some porch there to sit under um I, I think it's a really sophisticated you know solution to this uh to this issue to adding on at that part of the building you can go to the next they're working on the interior this means the library will be losing the windows the lower windows yes yeah yeah but That's correct. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yep. That's correct. Uh, so this is just the showing there's actually going to be an addition on the office side um, of the building. And so, you know, not a lot of impact there, but it just shows that, you know, how that's, that's uh, incorporated into the existing building. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is that the uh the grease trap gets replaced oh <laughs> this room here any ideas what's going to be done with it yeah what so so this <laughs> the, the question is this room here and this will be split into three different rooms three separate rooms uh, and so they will accommodate smaller uses for exercise or, or for, um, for smaller meetings and so on. Yeah. yeah. So this, this entire wing is going to become a wellness wing. Um, right 
Right. So, right. So we're actually, Dave's not there yet. We're actually expanding and creating a whole new fitness center. So at the end of this corridor, there is this addition. So uh, the swimming pool is just to the right there. And so there's this addition, which is the new wellness wing. And uh, actually the art, the uh, existing art room is also part of the new wellness wing as well. So that, you know, we're able to accommodate a lot more wellness activities um, within the expansion. And, um, you know, I think this is a really, it's a really nicely done addition. You can go to the next one too. It gives you a, a different view um and there's a couple versions of that we're not sure where the fireplace will go within that space but um you can uh, ha get an idea of what that looks like so that's going to be uh, a space there that will you know once again we need to figure out the exact size of of uh, uh, uh amenity and you know, what that needs to be but the these are the additions that we're we're looking at right so essentially from the end of this room to the existing end of the art studio will all become space for yoga, fitness, classes, et cetera. And then a new addition is going on the end of that for a wellness lounge, um, hair salon, et cetera. Fitness, the actual dedicated fitness space is going to be added. But then again, the interior spaces are not decided yet. This is where the focus groups will begin to, and Evelyn, your comments and concerns can be added in. This space will actually have modular walls, so you could do smaller classes, bigger classes, et cetera. So we're really going to be trying to accommodate and make things that are flexible spaces, and we're taking all these things into account. But it's the focus groups that your feedback will start to become instrumental as we refine those elements. All we're doing right now is trying to develop the exterior footprint and the concepts. That's all I got. All right. Yep. Uh, let's questions comments so i'll go to betsy and i'll work my way through where are the outside gardens that the residents can keep that are now there somewhere yeah yes yeah i i don't really know the answer to that but they'll certainly be accommodated within the new design those windows you see outside the new pack are they actually be real windows because you don't need when you have a, it'll be hard to use that as a space where you can have darkness and stuff. Right. No, it's a, it's, windows, I yeah. don't understand it. It's a great question. And uh, um, because we recognize that that space is multi-purpose and that there are times when we will want, uh, you know, it's nicer to have daylight. Um, they'll, they'll be uh, fully electric operational blackout shades on those windows yeah. so yeah. that it can it's accommodate, sophisticated accommodate all uses. Yeah. Uh, Michelle, I'm coming to you next. I actually stopped Dave in the hallway, but I still am having trouble visualizing where art scope's going to be when we have an exhibit and an opening reception. I can't figure out where it goes. Or, or it would go in the new gallery that we're, we're going to be creating. So, I mean, we're you're not seeing any floor plans right now, so it's hard for you to envision it, but we're actually going to be creating a gallery space outside of the dining room and in front of the pack, which is going to actually be probably art hanging space and other things. She's asking about where we would yeah, do art. Yeah, and stuff. also, once again, the lighting to to facilitate that, to, you know, to accommodate so that. So I want to make sure that you are on the focus group that's related to art and so forth. So we're going to figure out the times when it's appropriate to start getting the focus groups together to ask all of these kinds of specific questions. Yeah. Um, you didn't say anything about the dining room. Last time you talked about moving the dining room out into the courtyard between the central wing and the north wing. Yeah, so that is still a plan. Uh, it's not developed yet in terms of the exterior uh, elevations or, or renderings. But it's quite it's different from what the plan we showed you a while ago, and it's reduced in scale, and um, it, we're still working on that. But well, it, if you block off those first apartments enough, 
you really need to close the apartments. Well, uh, yeah, the, those apartments will not be blocked. Good. Yeah, they won't be blocked at all. No, we're just kidding. We heard what you guys said, and we're, the design team is well aware yeah. of it. Yeah. So um, we've talked about the way that we can uh, modify the plan to still get the seating that we need, but to not have the um, extrusion out into the courtyard that folks were concerned about. So the, t the design team is being extremely thoughtful and taking your concerns into consideration, which is why you don't have it yet, because they're trying to marry the solution that you're asking for to the capacity needs that we need to accomplish. Um, uh, there's just one more thing, um, and I know this may happen later on, but for Artscope, we are limited type exhibits we have by this tracking system. So I know there are people here that would like to show sculpture. And of course, because it's a multi-purpose room and you can't hang it, we've been limited. Uh, is there any thought to that? We haven't gotten into any kind of specifics for the interior use of the rooms at all yet. We're really just focusing on the exterior footprints of these spaces right now. So hold these questions and thoughts for your um, focus groups. In the south and central, there on each floor have community areas. North doesn't. Is there any provision to put in community areas on the fourth, fifth, and sixth floors of the north? No, we're we are, we're not there yet. And honestly, the the corridors and those public space, or you know, shared spaces, haven't been addressed yet. But thank you. Yeah. Just one quick question about. The art, uh, you mentioned art gallery, and I I don't know what, the, I can't imagine what an art gallery would be, because this is a whole long wall. We don't need an art gallery, a small room. And, and, yeah, I think Michelle. Art gallery, it's, it's, it's really, you can't envision it because you don't have anything in front of you, but what the um, designers are envisioning is, the space in between the dining room and the pack, which are now going to be across from each other, right now envision where like this, the lounges where nobody sits because they say the chairs are too far apart from each other. It's going to be turned into probably like a floating wall or multiple floating walls that will have backlighting. Okay, well, I mean, this is where focus groups come into play. These people have do, do this in senior living facilities all over the place. They know what we need to accomplish. So this is where you need to articulate your concerns. So join those focus groups. Yeah, oh, that's my question. <clears throat> Which focus group is it that will be discussing the library? And will it till, still continue to be used as an entrance to the pack? The primary entrance to the pack is a separate pack entrance, separately located. The doors to the pack, I mean, the doors to the library are not going to be removed. They will still be there. Um, how they will be used in relation to the pack will be operationalized sometime down the road, but there is no focus group purely for the pack, for the library. Um, uh, well, yeah, I mean, Jenny did raise that at the last meeting, and I, I'm, I'm actually going to be, I'll be meeting with the library committee, uh, you know, sep individually or separately, you know, uh, with the committee, and taking in their ideas about what, if, you know, what the library looks like in the future, you know, what sort of things it can provide. Um, so they're definitely part of the conversation, and will continue to be part of the conversation about what the library will be. Right. I mean, right now, the library is the only committee that has a solo voice. Every other committee is being absorbed into a focus group. So it's getting more airtime than any other committee. So we're not creating its yeah. own focus group for it. <laughs> I think this is exciting. I mean, in, to what extent are you uh, considering, particularly in terms of the volume of the space and all that, the fact that there will be another addition, which is perhaps half the size or a quarter or three quarters of the size of what exists here. And how is that you know, figured out in, in the design here? Are we 
talking about two separate things. So the addition will have its own independent areas. Are you, are you thinking should be in terms of services or mechanical yeah, services? This, or? In terms of size and yeah, capacity and, you know, how because right now, I mean, we are looking at that from a point of view, a static point of view, what we have right now. So it's changes for what we have not now. Residence? You're talking about the additional residents? Yep. Yeah, everything is growing because solely because we're adding residents. Yeah. So, so like that, we're that, making that, a 200 person pack because right now we have a 100 person pack. So, and, yeah, I mean, the dining room is growing because we're going to be adding residents. Like yeah. all of the growth is happening because of the new residents. So, yes, they will have their own. They will have a community a community building there too, though. Eight thousand square feet is what's currently contemplated. So as more plans come out, you'll start to see more of that as well. And you can imagine, I mean, there's a lot of conversations about that that new uh, expansion. And you know, how do we do deliveries? Do they go directly to there, or do they come through this building? So that it affects a lot of operational conversations as well. But we're certainly, you know, having those conversations. That's also why you see expansion to the dining room uh, as well, and consideration about you know the kitchen and its capability. So it's definitely part of that that whole conversation. So this whole new wing is called wellness. Going out here this way. Um, very little mention was made of, of the of the fitness room, which is currently grossly inadequate and needs to make be a very, very substantial change. Yep, you're not the only person to have said that, <laughs> which is, you know, it's good because what when we get into the nitty gritty, you look at programming and the actual equipment, how much room that needs uh, for, to be used, because obviously, if we're going to be building all these spaces, we want them, you know, they're being put in place in order to get the maximum use out of them. So that's definitely part of the, the you know, the design process. Thank you. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Please. Hi, I'm back, Susan. Yes. Um, and I hate to go back to something we've already dealt with, but I have another comment or or suggestion at least about acoustics for the pack. And that is you talked a lot about buying equipment and having better sound system. I'm wondering if you are going to hire someone who knows something about acoustics oh, of course. to plan the very shape of the of the room. Oh, of course. Oh, okay. Of course, yeah, yeah. Because that, that's really important. You can't just put a square room and say, <laughs> okay, now we fill it with equipment, first of all, which nobody knows how to use. We don't have a lot of people who know how to use a microphone here. They hold them down like this. And they wonder why you, then you wonder why you can't hear. Right. So, so I, we need a room that is. Oh, no, I, I hear you. I mean, I've actually. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was and my we, we, we know we'll have an acoustic consultant involved. Right. Okay. Um, and that's important for many spaces, not 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 for just the, the for the actual design of the room is what I'm thinking of the yes. shape of the room. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, our our design team is expansive, and there are consultants that are going to be used for all kinds of things throughout the project. That's just one of dozens. Yeah. And I'll, I'll let you know too. It's a passion of mine. I've done a lot of recording studios in the past, so it's. On, on my radar, definitely. Are there any thoughts about timeline yet? Great question. Um, I'd, <laughs> I'd love to answer you. Yeah. I really want to answer you, but not yet. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a little too early. Yeah, I mean, what's happening yeah. right now is, so all of this still really right now is conceptual, right? We still have to make sure that this project, which you're only still seeing a very, very small snippet of this, right? So you've seen basically a 3D rendering of a couple of things. Um, this is a much, much, much bigger project than what you're seeing it on the screen right now. And along with this comes a lot of price tags, um, a lot of considerations that the, we are trying to f make sure that financially this all works within what we have promised to you and that we think that the bondholders have an appetite for, which is that um, this doesn't do anything to extend um, the financial models beyond what we would normally 
see in a financial model. So a typical monthly service fee increase and also growing our day's cash on hand at the end of the day, which is what the, which is the only reason that all of this is even being contemplated. So we have to get numbers onto all of these things at the same time that we're moving this design and concept forward. So on next Wednesday, we have our annual board retreat. And at that meeting, um, we will have a full day of meetings with the uh, architect, the developer, the interior design firm, and the banker. And the developer will be bringing to us what they think at this point in time the full pot looks like with the expansion, with the updated design work, and with what the markets are going to look like when we're trying to take this to financing, what the entrance fees are going to look like on the units, what we think we're going to bring in, what we think this, this whole model is going to look like. Um, and if it's a net positive, like, with, like it was in November when they first brought it to us, now this thing has grown, now there's more units for independent living, et cetera, um, then we'll have a better idea on timeline. Initially, we thought the first round of financing we were going to try to do by the election. That was the goal. Um, now there's a question about whether or not the markets might be too volatile um, and that might not work in our favor. So we're thinking we might want to push that till after the election. Um, so it's just, it's really hard to say right now. I think we'll have a much better sense after next Wednesday's board retreat. Um, but, you know, it, it, there's there's a bunch of unknowns still. So, and of course, we just brought on our general contractor right. less than a week ago. So, you know, yeah. they they have a large say in that as well. Yeah. So, all right. So we're gonna we're gonna break this meeting up. I hope you guys all have a great rest of your day. And yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.